welcome to this episode on the 18th of October of Cooking with Carter. Um, we're going to do crab chowder today. I, I want to apologize first off for the lag in episodes. We've had a lot of editing to do uh, behind the scenes and we do plan to get those behind the scenes videos up as soon as we possibly can. But there's a lot of work involved in that editing process. We do appreciate your patience and your views. So here we go. Crab chowder going to list a couple of ingredients that we have. Uh, we have our uh, imitation crab meat. Uh, we have four onions. We're not going to use all of those onions, but I do have them out for several reasons. I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, some of the ingredients that we have are in the back. Uh, Marshall's helping us out again today. Uh, Max is on film, and Marshall's doing a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that, unfortunately, we don't have the behind-the-scenes camera rolling at this time. We have canned corn. We have diced potatoes. And we have egg noodles and Alfredo sauce, and I'll get into the spices as we go into that. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prepare our onions. Um, I'm going to go into some of the prep work in a little bit of time here as to what we've done, but I'm just going to saw off the top of the onion. And I'm going to saw off the bottom of the onion as well. Now for the crab chowder I normally use uh, two onions if they are small. If they're large I may use one and a half depending on how much onion flavor you want on on the the crab chowder. I don't use a lot of onion because it can be very overpowering. Now at this point I'm just going to peel back the outer layer of the onion on both sides and all I'm going to do is cut these into fours and the uh, cooking processor is going to do uh, the majority of the work for me. But you can see just by a little bit of work that first onion is done. The second onion is now done. Now here's where they're in twos. Now just for the um, the ninja part of it, I'm actually going to, like I said, cut them into fours. And they, some of them will break apart, which is fine. And there's the four on that one. Doesn't matter if they're, they're even when you're cutting them into fours because they're going to be finely chopped anyway. Okay, so that basically is the work of the onion. Now, I used a medium size onion, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and drop this into the Ninja. And this makes time go by so much faster. I, I cannot get over uh, some of the things that this cooking system can do. Uh, we tried making this um, one time before and unfortunately several months ago the, the, uh, the cut didn't make the, the film process because we turned the crab chowder into cotton candy because I, I, I did something wrong and I'll explain what that is as we get into it. I'm gonna take this large onion and I'm going to half this. I am not going to use this entire onion because of its size. But I am going to do the same thing I did before and that is cut off the bottom, spin the onion around, cut off its rat tail, Get into it. There you go. and it helps to have a very sharp knife for that because as you just saw even the sharpest of knives sometimes can have a harder time getting into there and I'm gonna go right down the center and that bad boy is a, That's a tough onion big onion I'm actually gonna use I'll use the bigger half this time and we'll sit this into a baggie. We'll have Marshall just 
uh, grab a, a ziplock or something we can set this into uh, so, so that we can get it out of the way and in comes the bowl and out goes the half of the onion we're not going to use again same thing I did before now I want you to notice something in this episode with the onion I'm not crying there's no eyes watering there's nothing really the onions are are just as strong but it's the way that you cut them and if you, you don't go too far into that onion root it makes a world of difference that was actually shown to me by my my mother and brother uh, both do that and there's uh, several onion cutting techniques that you can use and in this one I'm just going to cut it into twos instead of fours because well, virtually it's four already because you didn't use the other half right that's the that's Max already said that so that's perfect that was exactly what I was going to point just, out just in case I wasn't picked up on camera right. would you please explain what I said um, I, I, I took the half of onion and I sliced it so we went ahead that actually cut it into one so really it was cut into to two thirds because of the, the way the onion was shaped I used the bigger half now I want to tell you a trick what I've got on here is one of these plastic cutting boards when you're done with it just take it roll it back hand it to your assistant in the back and he will go ahead and take care of that this leaves a perfectly clean cutting board for the crab to be done so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to cut up the crab before we start the ninja just to get the prep work out of the way before we go to the first break now this I actually take um, I'm just gonna get it out of the package because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it and all I am doing I really don't have to do a lot with this because the ninja is gonna gonna take care of most of the work okay so all I'm gonna do I'm literally going to break this in almost in half a little bit little bit less than half and then I'll break it again and I break it long ways just to, to, to kind of give it to loosen it up a little bit that's literally all you need to do I'll show you on this bag over here and what we've done and you can see in the camera here we went ahead and cut off the top and opened up this section so that the crab is easy to gain access to so all I have to do is literally take the bag shake the bottom and literally the crab just falls right out of there just like that okay what we're gonna do again it it helps to hold it up I'm gonna try to go right in half okay that's basically what you want you really don't have to break it any more than that now here's the trick before we go to this break what I did last couple of months when I tried to do this I put all this crab in there at the same time that's too much for the ninja motor even at even at you're talking about 1800 rpms that's revolutions per minute basically that's too much because it cuts the bottom but it doesn't cut the top so what you're gonna do is just put in a section at a time cut it and let it do its work empty it put another section in cut it same on same on we'll be back in just a minute or two and I'll show you how this is done okay we'll be back all right we're back and uh, during the break we went actually ahead and chopped up the onion pretty fine I used about uh, five or six pulses on the uh, ninja system and we, we took out any of the big chunks that were remaining it wasn't that wasn't wasn't that many that were left uh, this again is the crab I left it just as it was you know when I went to break and I want to show you about how much I'm going to put in here I, I take this and I literally break it up by hand and I want you to notice in the ninja itself if I'm going to put chunks of crab in there I don't want to go up past the second blade um, so that's about as much as I want to put in I'll put one more down on the side just to, to make sure that it's all the way around because if you put too much in there it's going to clump up and you can get it turned into cotton candy uh, we'll put the lid on in the in the little area there make sure that's secured down go ahead and secure your power base to the ninja and that'll take just a moment now 
Max actually off camera is holding this just so I can show you. Take a look at the ninja here and watch this happen. Gonna go for five. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm gonna do two more. Six, seven. That's the consistency that I want to have. And if you have much more than that in the Ninja, it's not going to do it as well. You can do it thinner if you want. If you want cotton candy for crab, go right on ahead and just Ninja the heck out of it. But that's not what we want to do this time. So we'll go ahead, uh, and while the camera's facing my lovely face, okay, so it's not that lovely, but we'll go ahead. I want to show you when, it take, when you take the blade out of here, Lift it up slowly. If you lift it up slowly and just turn it, and just tap it on the side, rotate it, rotate it and tap, rotate it and tap, that actually brings almost all of the crab off there. And you'll see these blades are stuck together. Be very careful when you're transferring these. Now in this instance, because we're doing the same thing, I'm going to lay this on a napkin and we don't need to rinse it off because all we're doing is putting more crab in there. Now we're going to dump this crab. I'm going to hold this. Or you got that? It, just sit it right in the middle. We're going to dump this crab. Sorry about that. Was conferring with Max where to put the container in here. And we can actually just sit it right on the table. And most of it will come out of there. The stuff that doesn't come out. We'll use a mighty popper and just bang the heck out of it. Still got a little bit in there, and we'll rake it out of there. Um, and again, this is how you avoid having cotton candy for crab meat because you don't want to put too much in the Ninja. So we're going to repeat this process about six times, and I really don't want to think you want to see it six times, but I'll go ahead and show you one more time. Uh, same way we put the blades in, pick it up. That's not something you want to rush through. I want to keep my hand. Honestly. It's uh, it's there. We're going to pick that napkin up. Again, this is too big of a chunk. Take this crab as it's whole and just break it in half. You really don't have to do a whole lot. Take this crab and just break it into break it into fours or sixes. Just break it in and drop it in. If you put this whole piece in there, it's not going to get chopped up properly. So just continue. Drop a couple pieces in. And I'll put maybe maybe one more. Now this piece isn't too, too bad, but I'll go ahead and throw this in. Go ahead and throw that in. And I'll throw this little chunker over here right in there with it. That's about as much as I want to put in. We'll do the same thing. Guide the ninja in. And it's going to be a little toughy to get in there. Sometimes that happens. You just wiggle it till it fits. Find the bump on the ninja. There it is. Going for five again. One, two, three, four, five. Now notice there are some big chunks in there. If that happens, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the ninja toward me and I'm just going to work it to some of those chunks fall in the middle okay sit it back down okay max will hold it there okay now I'm going to do these a little longer I'm going to do two one two that's about as much as you want you really don't have to do a lot with it okay when we come back we're going to show you how the rest of this looks in its chopped form, you won't see any big clumps of crab on the cutting board. Wow, it's a lot of C's in one sentence. And we'll go on from there, which is to open the uh, canned goods and transfer them into the skillet. Uh, and we will begin cooking it in the skillet first and then transfer it into the pot. We'll be right back on Cooking with Carter. All right, and we're back on Cooking with Carter. A uh, couple things that we've done I want to show. And it might take just a second for the camera to pan over, but I want to show you guys this crab and how actually small the chunks are. <clears throat> now you can do that a little bit thicker if you want uh, because again this is going to go into a rather large pot but what we've done is we've opened up four cans. We've got 
two cans of potatoes that are diced. Um, we've drained one of all the liquid and we left one full. Two cans of corn. Uh, actually, just kettle corn is what we use. We've drained one and left the other one full. And we do that for our liquid base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I've actually sprayed the skillet down with a non-stick cooking spray. Uh, and we're going to just go ahead Would you produce this? and pour this in. It is actually on 350 degrees. And I didn't let it quite heat all the way up. We're going to go ahead and just get the bowl out of the way here. Now before I do anything, I find that using, again, my favorite little toy here, the metal spatula with the slots in it, um, works really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread this out. And I'm going to let this onion become translucent. Uh, that is basically to where you can see through it. And all we're going to do is just move everything around into into kind of a kind of like a, a, a pasty form, like you're uh, frosting a cake. And I'm not really going to going to move it too much. Once I get it where I want it, I'm going to let it sit there. I'm going to uh, let this brown up, and I'm going to use just a tiny, tiny bit of seasoning on this onion. The only thing I'm going to season the onion with is complete seasoning. Not much at all. Just give it a little coat. Now you normally see me with the, the little containers where I have all my seasonings um, together and I just take a little pinch and put them in there. Not today. Not with this. Not as big as this is going to get. Because this skillet will be almost full to the brim. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in a moment or two. So I let this sit on one side for about 90 seconds. And it's approaching that point because I know I've been talking that long. But really what you want to look for is you want to see this onion kind of get kind of clear. You will see a clear, a clear base on this onion. And I'll show you when we turn it over kind of what I'm talking about. I did not use salt, did not use pepper yet. We'll do that when everything starts coming together. Uh, quick thing, when you're adding your crab, add it in sections. Don't add it all at one time. If you do that, you're going to have crab, crab, and a big chunk of crab in there. And that's not what you want to do. You want to let this integrate with each other. So now, what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to go ahead and flip this onion. Okay. See how it's just starting to get brown? Okay, it comes back into that, that massive mound of onion again. That's fine. Bring it together. Take your spatula, press down. See how pretty that looks? Just a nice brown coating on that onion. If I would have let the if I would have let the uh, skillet heat all the way up to 350, that would have killed it. Okay, so what we're gonna do now before we add the crab in, I'm just gonna give that another toss. And it does not take very long for this to come all together. I'm gonna bring the onion. To the center of the skillet. Okay, now I want to show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to sit the spatula back down over here on the trusty large freezer. I'm going to take my cans with the liquid and I have them closest to me. Trick of the trade, guys. Watch this. When you pour this in, Be very careful because of the steam. Notice how my hand was right in the way, but it didn't burn me because I went very slowly. Okay, once this adds up, that's what we want. Right there. In go the potatoes. That's all you need. Potatoes are gone. I'm going to go ahead to the same thing with the corn. 
Because there's liquid already in the skillet, this one I'm still going to go slow, but I don't have to go as slow. One constant pour. Notice that the corn's going to go right on top, and it's going to drizzle over. Now this whole time, where is that onion? That onion is being steamed. And I got a couple corn chunks in there, really don't care. Now comes the quick part. I'm going to take my other two cans, right hand and left hand. Corn. And under the arm, potato. Come on, baby. The way that falls out of there. Now, take your spatula, scrape all the way underneath, and turn. All the way underneath, and turn. Last time, all the way underneath, and turn. Look at how clear this onion is. That's another reason why I only used one and a half onions because I don't want to over onionize and that is actually a word onionize a dish because an onion has a very uh, strong flavor especially a Vidalia onion a green onion can do the same thing and it really depends on how much you work it as far as what you want to do now that all this has been integrated in I'm going to let this steam for just a few minutes. Notice I haven't seasoned yet. The reason for that, I'm letting all of this get integrated first. Once I've done that, always come down the side of your skillet and make sure that you get... And see, all that liquid in there allows this not to burn. That's another reason why I go ahead and do that. I'm going to spread this out. Kind of, sort of. don't have to go too crazy with it. Tap your spatula there. Now here we go. This is what I'm going to do with the seasoning. going to take a little bit of oregano. Make sure to look at the camera when I do that. It's kind of hard, you know. I want to watch what I'm doing and not look at the camera, but i got to do that. So we're going to just sprinkle the oregano all over in a generous portion. Comes out to about, about four to five tablespoons or so of oregano. I'm not flipping yet. Big reason for that, don't tighten the cap all the way. I'm going to go with just a little bit more complete seasoning. There that is. <clears throat> and I, <clears throat> excuse me, try to get a little bit more complete seasoning than usual. That way you don't have to season as much on the second flip. Now what I do when I use my seasonings, I can transfer them over to the other side so I know I've used them. Onion powder, same rule I always use. A little bit goes a long way. I already have onion in here. Don't want to use a lot of that. Okay, now, last thing I'm going to use as far as seasoning is concerned is, well, last two things actually. A little garlic salt. Now, if you don't want to use garlic salt, fine and dandy. Chop up a clove of garlic, peel the garlic, mash the garlic, cook the garlic, wait for the garlic to turn brown, then add it. Guess what? Garlic salt's already there. Easy to do. Okay, so now. What if you use uh, garlic that's like in a tube or something like that? And you can also get the chopped up garlic, but you've still got to get it. You've still got to wait for it to brown. It still takes forever in a day. And you're, you know, better off just using the garlic salt a lot easier. Now, this is where you got to be careful. Seasoning salt. You want to give it a reddish tinge. When I say tinge, you want to see the seasoning salt in there, but you don't want to go crazy with it. Okay? Because that's a powerful ingredient. Salt the heck out of it, you won't eat it. Now, I'm actually going to have Max start spooning in some of this crab. I'm going to have Marshall just grab a, grab a big spoon from back there. So we can actually start integrating some of this crab in. And while that's happening, I again am going 
to use this mighty trusty spatula type friend to just toss. And as Max integrates a spoon or two of crab, he can just plop it in there. And I'm going, each time he does a spoon, I'm going to just toss. Because what this does, this integrates everything into there. And you ensure not to get too much crab at a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. so go right around here. And you can go ahead and start adding a little bit more there, Max. You can just go ahead and bring it in because we're just about ready. Uh, now, when we come back, we're going to add the rest of this crab, okay? We're going to have a pot with some water in there. We're going to boil that water. Once that water starts boiling, we're going to add the noodles that we have. We have uh, some egg noodles that are just... I got the small ones because I like how they work. I don't like the big, thick noodles in my crab chowder. I've done that a couple of times. It kind of makes it hard to, um, to work with. The noodles go a little bit better when they're... Uh, when they're easier to work with and smaller. Now this is kind of what it's going to look like uh, until we transfer it to the pot. So when we come back, we're going to go ahead and boil the noodle, uh, uh, cook the noodles, transfer everything into the pot, and add the Alfredo sauce. And we'll show you what that looks like next to the finished product on Cooking with Carter. We'll be right back. See you in a bit. All right, we're back. Uh, I want to show you what the, the skillet looks like once we've taken everything out of it. So give us just a moment, we'll pan over to that and show you. Now, now that is not how it looks. That's the skillet with everything out of it. What we've done, we went ahead and transferred it over to the stove. Now, the stove has a pot on it, and we basically added Alfredo sauce and the seasonings that you saw me use earlier, and just about uh, a container or so of chicken stock, and what that does is that really builds in the flavor of everything together. So you let that cook for about 15 to 20 minutes to heat back up nice and steamy. And by the time you get a bowl of that, you'll kiss your mama. I can tell you that right now. We will see you next week on another fabulous episode of Cooking with Carter. If you can't, be good, be bad, but be good at it. See you later. All right, guys, wanted to just do one last quick little video here. To finish this up, I wanted to show you the, the bottom of the bowl. This is actually my uh, second helping. I will say that, that I think this is one of the, the best dishes to make in the winter time. It's very light and flavorful, and this turned out very well. Um, I'm going to film Max for just a second and let him tell you what he thought. Without dropping the camera in the crab chowder bowl. In my honest opinion, for as light as it was, it was very, very hearty still. And also, uh, for as much crab as went into it, I know you saw that giant bowl that we had. It was uh, not overpowering whatsoever. Like, it was the right amount. It was very good. There was the corn in it would make it look crunchy, but mostly it's a soup or chowder. It was really good, guys. If you make it pretty much the exact same way we did it, uh, we'll put also, when we edit this, we'll, we'll put how long we, we had it on the stove and stuff. But otherwise, it was, it was great, guys. All right, so we're going we're gonna to end this session. I'm going to hand it back to Max for just a second. Feel free to drop me a line and tell me what you think. So tell me something you want to see. If you can't be <laughs> good, be bad, but be good at it. We will see you later on Cooking with Carter. Thanks a lot. <laughs>